Isn't it funny how a few short days can change your whole life? And sometimes it's not until later, much later, that you realize what happened to you, and when it happened, and why it happened. Life sure is strange, sometimes. Hop in. Hit him, man. I'm Harmer, this is Stokes. Hey, how's it going? I'm Alan. Did you feel that earthquake? When? I don't know, just like 10 minutes ago. I didn't feel it. Well, there'll be another one. Where are you from? From Kansas. Kansas? Whoa, Kansas? Yeah, right near Kansas City. Well, you're not in Kansas anymore, Elder. I've never seen a seven man made wonder. I've never graced the car of any king. That I've been told time and again By every soul who has ever been About the very things in life they think I'm missing Because I've never been to the Leaning Tower of Pisa Times in my heart Anytime, anywhere Welcome to Los Angeles, Elder Greatest mission in the world I got a letter here from your bishop about your father. He's going to be in prison for a very long time. It's my stepfather. He's my stepfather. It says in here you're sealed to him. That makes him your father. How's your mom doing? She asked to have her name removed from the records of the church. I suppose you're wondering what you're doing out here on a mission while your family's falling apart back home. Your dad served a mission. A lot of good it did him. You're not here to do good for yourself. You've been doing that for 19 years. You come here to do good for other people, to help them turn their lives around. Your parents made some decisions that were bad decisions. There's nothing you can do about that. Huh? But your job is to help some people make right decisions, to turn their lives around and do some good in this world. You think you can get out and do that? I don't know. Well, why don't we go out and find out? I'm such a sweet boy. I know, I know he's a sweet boy. He's driving me crazy. He doesn't I'm going to put you with one of my best men. I'm going to, be, I'm going to flip back his, his coat. He's 29 he's years old. Playing. He's looking out at the audience. He's smiling. No way. He's one of the oldest ones we have. His name's Dalton, but mostly they just call him Pops. Dalton! <laughs> yes, sir! I think your husband caught us flirting. No. Elder Dalton, this is Elder Allen, your new companion. He's from Kansas. So, you're the one. <laughs> All right, let's do some good. Is this our place? No. Well, who lives here? We're about to find out. Why can't we just go home first? We are going home. It's one door at a time. 
Hi, I'm Elder Dalton. This is my companion, Elder Allen. We're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm a little busy. Well, we just have a short message we'd like to share with you today. Oh, look, I don't have time right now. What would be a more convenient time for us to come back? Look, I don't want to be rude, but I'm just not interested in what you have to say. Oh, I think if you're not interested in what we have to say, you must not know what it is that we have to say. And uh, I'd like to leave you with this pamphlet. It talks a little bit about Jesus and his visit to the Americas. Did you know that Christ came to the Americas after his resurrection? No. Well, he did, and I think you'll be very interested in what he had to say. Uh, I gotta go. If you have any questions, give us a call. Our number's on the pamphlet. Thanks. I could never do that. Yes, you could. Right now, in fact, you've got the next one. At that rate, we'll be home before you know it. Okay, why are we here? Um, to gain physical bodies and experience and wisdom. No, not not everybody, just us, just missionaries. To baptize? No. To preach the gospel? Wrong. Wrong? Wrong. It's to preach the gospel by the Spirit. Okay, it can't just be you and me. It's got to be you and me and the Holy Spirit. Right, right. Wait, it's starters, elders? Yeah, good afternoon, sisters. Hey, are you lonely today, elder? I'm lonely every day. Did you read that book I gave you? Oh, we've been too busy. Well, read that book. Then you'll stop and talk? Just read the book. Okay, it's not about us. It's not about how smart we are, how fast we can flip through the scriptures. Who okay. are those girls back there? How many people are you going to convert? What, on my whole mission? Over the next two years, how many people are you going to convert? I don't know, like, like 30? Yeah, like 30. Wrong. You're not going to convert any. You're not going to convert a single soul because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's between them and the Lord. Okay, we give them some tools, some information. We're like the telephone company. The Lord's on one end, we hook up the line, but it's their conversation. The Lord converts them. They convert themselves. All we do is teach by the Spirit. The field is wide, Elder, ready to harvest, even in Los Angeles. That, that was kind of a trick question. So where are we going? And who are those girls back there? Okay, your turn. I did the last one. Yeah, you need the practice. Yeah. Hi, I'm Elder Allen, and this is my companion, Elder... Dalton. Dalton. And we're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Not Christ. Again. We have a short message. How many times do I have to tell you guys? If you come knocking on my door again, I'm going to step out there and I'm going to beat you to death. Hey, buddy, take it easy. We're just we're just trying to share something with you. If you're not interested, that's fine, but there's no reason to be rude. Rude? Yeah, I'm rude. I'm not the one knocking on your door all day. I'm not even going to listen to this. Hey! Hey, get your foot out of my door! I'll get my foot out when you apologize to my companion. Yeah, I'm not apologizing to anybody. You're going to apologize, and then you're going to sit down, and you're going to listen to what we have to say. Yeah, I'm going to get my gun. You can open this door. Get in there and teach him a lesson. Pretty good, man. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh myself to sleep tonight. <laughs> Yo, this dude that took your picture, for which you will always be remembered. <laughs> His name's Mandy. Hey, 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 I want to copy the picture. Yeah, before the second coming, man. <laughs> yeah, right, not happening. Come on. And this worthless bum here is Sandoval. How's it going, man? That was great, man. That really was. <laughs> Sandy was just playing the blues because his girlfriend's going to marry his big brother. She's my fiance. She's your sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Banks, and that funny-looking spud over there, that's my companion, Kinnegar. <laughs> this immature behavior has got to stop. <laughs> Come on, man, I'll show you your room. This isn't funny, guys. It's not funny. <laughs> 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 
Who was here before? Lambert. I went to Cover City about five hours ago. Five hours? <laughs> wow. Well, that's one of the blessings of a life of poverty. It doesn't take long to pack. Yeah. Hey, uh. Tell me. What do you think of, uh, Pops? Um. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he means well. I think he tries a little too hard. You know? I guess you don't, do you? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> welcome. And, uh, I'll watch out for you, okay? We are all enlisted till the conflict is o'er. Happy are we, happy are we. Soldiers in the army, there's a bright crown in store. We shall win and wear it by and by. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a good day's work. Thank you for sending Elder Allen and forgive us for the manner in which we welcomed him. Please bless us as we go along and just help us through our days. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Good night. Oh. We give thee thanks for our Savior, and we pray that through him we may be forgiven of our sins and our weaknesses, that we may serve thee in worthiness, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. It's good to have you. We're not finished? It's personal prayer. Oh. <laughs> it's 10.30, Elder. Lights out. Hey, Pops, wake up. Man, what time is it? It's 2 o'clock. Get up. Your greenie just went AWOL. Time's the bus leave. 6.30. That's quite a wait. You don't have to stay. No, oh, yes, I do. See, I'm your companion. At least until you get on that bus. So what, you're going to try and talk me out of it now? No, you're a big boy. You can make your own decisions. Last call for number eight San Diego. Last it's bad timing, that's all. You might come back later. No, they, they won't let you. When you throw it away, it's gone. They'll let me come back. Well, well, yeah, when you're 65, when you've got arthritis and kidney stones, and maybe they'll let you help people with their family history. Boy, wouldn't that be fun. I just didn't think I should be here. Well, then you shouldn't. Three hours from now, you won't be. Good for you. Good for me. I don't need any more deadbeat companions. I'm not deadbeat. You must be a coward. You know, you don't know anything about me. All right, fine. 
Why are you leaving? But I've known you for half a day and you expect me to bear my soul to you. At least no one can say I didn't try. Yeah. You gave it a whole 12 hours. Hey. Hey. You got a girlfriend? You miss her, I bet. It's not a girl. I don't even have a girlfriend. He doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. So what are we going to do here for the next three hours? Maybe it's a word of wisdom problem. I mean, maybe he likes to take a drink now and then. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe it's a morality problem. Maybe he's in love with you. Fine, I'll go back. Just leave me alone. Okay, good decision. What? I told you. I don't want any deadbeat companions. I can stay if I want. You do it my way. You do the work. You keep all the rules. Fine. Fine. But I'm keeping my ticket. Good idea. And I'm not unpacking my bags. Fine. All right, then. All right. That hurt? Oh, yeah. Mormon talks about horses in America. What? There were no horses in America before Columbus. It's pretty much a documented fact. Why are you still reading that stuff? It's as bad as pornography. How do you expect to defend yourself against these people? And these people are the enemy. Do you want to look stupid in front of them? You gotta know their weapons and their strategy. You know, you got some weird terminology there. I ought to be reading the scriptures, not this garbage. A hundred. Hey, let tell you what the snail said when he was riding the turtle's back. What? gonna do anyway 160 hey pops why don't you get down here and do a few could be dead in six months what do i want to exercise for because it's fun pops doesn't look like fun what do you call three lepers in a hot tub okay six why'd the lepers have to stop the poker game because they threw their hands on the table this will do it why the lepers have to stop their hockey game there was a face-off on the ice. <laughs> there was a face-off on the ice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Personal study. Right. Um. Hmm. 
What am I supposed to be studying? Well, that, that would be personal. Hey, wake up. It's 8.30, companion study. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you turn to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1. 1 Timothy, it's it's in the Bible. Page 1506, second column, yeah, the New Testament. Top of the page. Okay. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a, for a righteous man. I am a ship out on the ocean. My sail rocking in the wind. I cast my net into the water. Let the captain bring me. This is my companion, Elder Dalton. No, no. Discúlpeme, por favor. No entiendo. No entiendo nada. Está bien, señora. Pues nosotros somos misioneros de la Iglesia de Jesucristo de los Santos de los últimos días. Y tenemos un mensaje bien importante. Hacer. Look, I'm very busy right now. Why don't you just go talk to somebody else? Ah, there's nobody home. I, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. If you steal, you cheat, you lie, you fight You party with the woman, stay out late at night And you give up church, and you give up prayer And have a, a goatee, and you roll our hair If you're rude, and cruel, and lewd And run around half naked, you're in the nude And you listen to that darn rock and roll I swear, I swear You're gonna go to hell, go to hell You're gonna go to hell Hell's a place, and it ain't that swell I'm telling you boys, you're all gonna go to hell you're gonna go to hell, go to hell, you gonna go to hell I hope you look good with horns and a tail I'm telling you boys, you're all gonna go to hell Go to hell! Hey, Bob. Hey. 
Man, that looks good. Hi, Carnes. Hi, guys. Hey, Connie. Oh, hey, you must be the new one. Hi. Yes, this uh, this youngster here is my new companion. Hi, I'm Connie. I'm Brandon. I mean, I'm Elder Allen. <laughs> Connie, I would like one of those great big greasy double cheeseburgers with a couple of onion rings. On the side this time? No, 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 no. In the burger. And uh, no, no lettuce, no pickle. Some of those french fries around the side like you do. And uh, one of those great big chocolate shakes with extra syrup. Anything for you, Brandon. Well. Okay. Will you close your mouth when you're eating? It's disgusting. <laughs> Man, is she really pretty or have I just been out too long? You've definitely been out too long. I think she's pretty. Yeah, well, you know what they say. You don't look once, you're not a man. But if you look twice, you're not a missionary. Oh, yeah? How many times do you guys look? I look once. What about you? I'm still looking once. Here you go. Thank you. And here's your check. Okay. Hey, uh, Connie. Yeah? You know we're missionaries, right? Sure, I know. You guys come in here all the time. So you know what we do, right? Yeah, you're kind of like nuns, but you're men. Well, yeah, kind of, but, you know, we only do this for two years, and then, you know, we go home and, and go to work or go back to school. Or get married. Sure, sure, we, we could do that. You know, I mean, I, mean I, I, I could do that, you know, with someone. Okay. Can I ask you a question? If I gave you a book, would you read it? You don't have money for a tip, do you? No, no, we'll, we'll leave you a tip. And the Book of Mormon, if, if you'll read it. I like to read. Thank you. You're welcome. I sure do love missionary work. I'm not quite clear on this. Was that called finding or flirting? I, I wasn't flirting. I, I was being flirted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wasn't dancing, President. I was being danced. Yeah, I wasn't kissing, President. I was being kissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to eat that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you guys know that uh, Joseph Smith gave four different accounts of the first vision? Did you? Man, why don't you put that stuff away, man? It's really starting to get on my nerves. All right. Just thought you might want to learn about your own religion. <clears throat> he gave different accounts because he was talking to different audiences, different circumstances. Hmm. Well, that must be why the First Presidency never even mentioned that God and Jesus Christ appeared until after the 1900s. It's not true. It says it right here. Look, it's not true. Orson Pratt and John Taylor both taught it repeatedly. Why don't you look it up in our books for a change? How many lies do you have to find in there before you're going to get it? Just forget it, okay? No, I'm not going to forget it. I mean, look look at this stuff. I mean, who are these people? Don't they have anything better to do with their time? I mean, we've got, we got drugs, disease, people living out on the street, and these people spend their time trying to tear down other people's faith. I mean, doesn't, that, doesn't that give you a clue? Why are you getting so upset, Elder? I'm getting upset because you're wasting your time with that garbage instead of doing your work. And why aren't you with your companion? Because he's sick of listening to this stuff. You're dragging him down, and you're dragging the rest of us down, too. So why don't you get it together? Excuse me. Let me use the restroom. I, I better go. I'm Catholic, and your mother was Catholic. I know, Papa. And your grandparents, and your great-grandparents were Catholic. We know that, Papa. You've been good to us. Your mama always took us to Mass. Your mother was devout. But these missionaries, they have the Lord's Spirit. Laura felt it. She felt it at my baptism. I feel it every week at church. And when I pray, I want to read the scriptures, Papa. Do you feel the Spirit? 
when these boys come to visit? I do. Do you feel it now? I do, Papa. I feel nothing. We have a baptism scheduled for Saturday. Laura still lives at home. She needs your blessing, your consent. Laura has already been baptized. We're Catholic. We're Catholic. Hola, elders. Hello there, sisters. You're out early today. We're the early birds. We get all the worms, you know. Did you read that book I gave you? No. I read it. You read the book? I read the book. You read the Book of Mormon? Yeah. What, you don't think I can read or something? No, no, it's just... What was your favorite part? I like the part where that prophet, Abby and Naughty? Abinadi, yeah. Yeah, where, where he tells the, the king and all the people to repent and all, and they won't do it, and so... They tell him to deny Jesus, and he won't do that, and so they tie him up, and they put sticks under him, and they set him on fire, and they burn him to death. <laughs> it was, was kind of sad, but I like that part a lot. <laughs> so can I have that appointment now? How about Saturday night? We're, we're working Saturday night. Yeah. Okay, how about Saturday day? Yeah. We can do that. All right. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. So what was your dad like? What? I mean, you know, we're companions. I'm supposed to get to know you, right? My dad's a really great guy. Yeah. <laughs> Not much of a sense of humor, though. What does he do? He's a janitor, actually. Oh. Yeah, he uh, works at my old high school. He was always hoping I'd be a surgeon in the military, you know, become an officer. So he didn't want you to go on a mission? No, he's not Mormon. Oh. Not yet. <laughs> we found out we don't get paid for this for being missionaries. <laughs> um, I should have seen him. He didn't understand that at all. <laughs> How about your mom? My mom died a long time ago. She had cancer. What about your mom? She's still alive and all. Well, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, my dad, uh, my dad left when I was seven. I haven't seen him since. I, um, I don't remember much about him. Just, um, just that he took me to this baseball game once. And the last time I saw him, he gave me this autographed baseball. Hank Aaron. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. But then, uh, when I was 13 and I saw uh, Hank's real signature on a baseball, it didn't look anything like mine. <laughs> no way. Mm hmm That's the kind of guy he was, huh? Hey, Dalton! Brother Rose, this tadpole here is my new companion. His name's Elder Allen. He's from Kansas. Kansas? Yeah, right near Kansas City. Well, Elder, you're not in Kansas anymore. Yep, I heard that one already. So, Brother Rose, are, are you in our ward? Uh, Brother Rose isn't baptized yet. Now, why is that? I keep forgetting. Your Brother Rose can't give up his coffee. I'm trying. Yeah. We got a deal going. For every cup of coffee he drinks, we get a free ride somewhere. What are we up to now? 67. 
And you know, there's only one way to uh, pay that off. Clean the slate. I know. Now, Benny's getting baptized on Saturday. You feel like going for a swim? <laughs> <laughs> Elders, Brother Rose, hi. Hey, Benny, how you doing? Great. Benny, I would like you to meet my brand new companion. Elder Allen. Oh, Elder Allen, hi. Hi. Where are you from? Kansas. Where? <laughs> Back east on the Midwest. You know, Toto, Dorothy, Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> Come on out back, Brother Rose. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Hi, elders. Oh, my gosh. What is this? Oh, Elaine, you didn't have to do that. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> so you finally made it. I am right on time. If you're not ten minutes early, you're late. Yeah, who told you that? You did. So is this the Grainy? I'm Elder Allen. Hi, Elder Allen. I'm Sister Monson. Hi. It's nice to meet you. You too. This is Benny's sister, Elaine. Hi. Benny, do you want to uh, do you want to eat first, or shall we have an interview? Uh, honestly, I think I'd rather eat first, if that's all right. <laughs> okay. Give you time to relax. That's right. <laughs> Benny, who would you like to say the blessing? Uh, uh, Brother Rose, will you say? Okay. Our, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this food. Okay, Benny, the, uh, the reason I'm here today is to, to talk with you a little bit about your baptism. Yes, it's on Saturday. Yeah, and, uh, and to be sure that you understand the covenants that you'll be making with the Lord, and also to be sure that you're, that you're ready and worthy to make those covenants. So I need to ask you a few questions, and uh, whatever we talk about, it's just between you and me. Do you understand? Yes. All right. What do you play? Um, I played a little baseball. No. I meant musical instrument. Piano, guitar. Oh, no. Um, not really. Do you play anything? Cello. It's shaped like a really big violin. I know what a cello is. My brothers are all jocks. I'm not a jock. They could bench press 300 pounds, but they wouldn't read a book to save their lives. I like to read. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. All right, then. In a jock's opinion, of course. What would you say are the three greatest books ever written? Wow, there's so many. Um, why don't you go first? All right, that's easy. First would be Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Second would be Tolstoy's War and Peace or Anna Karenina. You take your pick. And then maybe Chaim Potox, my name is Asher Lev. Have you ever read any of those? I think I read one of Steinbeck's back in high school. It was about the dumb guy and he strangles a rabbit, you know? Of Mice and Men. Yeah. Yeah, it's a short one. Okay, your turn. Wait, let me guess. Volumes one through three of the Goosebumps series. Actually, um, hmm, I think my choices would be, um, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, and the Doctrine and Covenants. Yeah, those those would definitely be my picks. You set yourself up for that one. <laughs> so, you think I'm ready? I think you are. Elder, hmm? do you think, could someone like me teach the gospel, be a missionary, I mean? Absolutely. You just, 
just take a year or so to prepare and to study, and then, you know, if you're worthy and able, you'd be a missionary. Yeah. I can run faster than you can in these. <laughs> I know you can. I know it. But I'm 24 years old. Benny, when I was baptized, I was 25. I was in my second year of medical school. I could have been a doctor by now. This is the best thing I've ever done. It's the best thing I'll ever do. So what'd you think of the sisters? I think Munson's nice. I don't know about that other one, though. Yeah, Sister Front. Yeah, what a... <laughs> What? She's a very smart girl. She thinks so. Well, she is pretty, don't you think? No, I, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Maybe she'd smile once in a while. She, uh, she had on a nice dress, though. Don't you think? Huh. You know, I didn't notice. Come on, just tell him, hold it down. Not what you think, you can bite your fingers off. Oh, great, here we go again. Call 911 now. We need some oil. Oil, I got oil. Here, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. him. Hold him down. We're holding him. Come on. Come on. Say the blessing, man. What? Say it, man. Hold it, hold it. No, 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 it's, it's North Lincoln, uh, just a block from Bundy. Marcus James Dalton, by the authority of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, I anoint you with this oil which has been set aside for the blessing of the sick, and I do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. North Lincoln. Let me see you. Take his hands. Take his hands. Marcus James Dalton, in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, I seal this anointing which has been made by a worthy and faithful priesthood holder. I leave a blessing upon thee. you come with me
A brain tumor is a very difficult thing to treat. They operated and took most of it out before his mission, but they didn't get it all. It stopped growing, and that's when he put in his papers. He had to go through chemotherapy, radiation. He lost a lot of his hair. He lost his energy. I think that's why they sent him here, because we have the best cancer center in the world here, just in case. He's got maybe three or four months left. You can learn a lot from him in that time. You're not sending him home. I tried sending him home. He won't go. Day is it? It's Thursday. We got a three thirty appointment. Take sound of all. Yeah, sure. Just um, just rest. Three thirty. I got it. Three thirty. Sound of all. Take sound of all. What's that again? Um, as I was saying, family relationships do not have to end with death. Couples can be married for eternity in temples. Didn't I tell somebody to take out this trash? I'll do it in a minute. I'm talking to somebody here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, families, families can have the promise that that if they live worthy, they they can endure forever, not not just until death. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that even after I'm dead, I'm going to be with my family and all. That's right, but only if you live worthy, of course. Look, guys, I really don't think I'm interested. It's my mom and that's my dad. We lost a little weight since then, though. <laughs> Those are my little brothers. There she is. What I told you about. She's waiting for me. My little brothers are gonna get at her. I know they will. Isn't she gorgeous? She's beautiful. Where's the rest of them? The mission pictures. Oh. Right. Wow. Can't afford to get them developed. I figure I'll just wait till I get home and do it all at once. Probably cost me about a hundred thousand bucks. enough of this childishness. Short sheet in beds, pictures on the toilet. It's getting way out of hand, way out. I can't pray this morning. I don't feel like praying. I feel like strangling somebody. Mangum, you say the prayer. I said it yesterday. While Pops is gone, I'm in charge. It's what the president said, so you say the prayer. Father in heaven, thank thee for this day and for a good night's rest. And please bless Pops that he'll be back with us again very soon. And bless us today that we'll have a good day out there on the streets. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 
Let's just see it and put this childishness behind us. Hey, man. What do you want, granola? No, I think we got a bad box. Give me that sugar puffy thing. <clears throat> Dalton's deathbed. Pop, Alan. Yeah, we're already in. I'm just on the street right now in Hollywood. Are you wearing your watch? Do you know what time it is? Yes, I know what time it is. All right, what are you doing? We're on our way to that discussion. Who are you taking? Kinniger? Take Banks. Why? Just take Banks and hurry up. You're going to be late. Fine, I'll take Banks. All right, goodbye. Take Banks. Figures. Yeah, yeah, okay. You see what I'm asking? What's that all about? Blacks aren't good enough to be priests? I already told you. Blacks can be priests. Look at me. Do I look white to you? You are starting to look a little white to me. Yeah. And what is this 1978 stuff? Why couldn't we hold the priesthood before then? My daddy was a good preacher. Why couldn't he have been a Mormon preacher? Look. The first thing you got to understand. Oh, I understand. All right. It's that the priesthood isn't a right. It's the authority to act in God's name. It's not just something you can take on yourself. I mean, it has to be given to you. Oh, by the white man? No, 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 no. You're missing the whole point. It's not about race. It is about race. It's always about race. And what about that part in the Bible? You know, the part that says God accepts everybody no matter what race they are? Mm-hmm. Right. That's absolutely right. And that's when the Apostle Peter was commanded to take the church to the Gentiles, the white people, because before that it had only gone to the Jews. It's another kind of parallel. It's the ancient Church of Christ with the Latter-day Church of Christ. And it's probable that we were the first church in the country to have black leaders in front of white congregations. That's right. And I think what Elder Banks is trying to say... Hey, nobody cares what you think, all right? And even when the Jews had the Gospels, even when they had the priesthood, not all the men had the priesthood, only the tribe of Levi. They were the only ones that were given the authority to officiate in the temple. And that's in the Old Testament. We can look it up. And that's another thing. Why just the men? Why couldn't I be a Mormon preacher? I'm sure I know more about the Bible than he does. Yeah, that's the last thing that y'all want. There's a black woman behind the pulpit. It's the Lord's authority. It's the power to act in his name. He gives it to whomever he sees fit, whenever he sees fit. That's all there is to it. So when is he going to let us women have a bit of it? Is he ever going to let us have it? I don't know. You'll just have to ask him that. Boy, they are making a fool out of you. You're going. I know you're going. How do you know? Because we've been together three months. I've been in the same ward for five. Yeah, there's no way you're out of here. Oh, hey, Stearman was in Westford for seven. No way. Yeah. I can talk to Big Girl for you. <laughs> well, we're kind of tight. <laughs> Here. Thanks. Thanks. I didn't even know about this stuff until after I was baptized. It threw me for a loop, you know. It's like the Lord just let me smack up against the big brick wall. I read everything I could find on it and I asked everybody else what they thought. <laughs> I call this guy, this African guy, I mean a real African guy, <laughs> this Mormon guy, and I didn't even meet him, I just knew that he was black. He didn't help any. You know, my brother served his mission in Mexico, and he baptized like 80 people. No way. Yeah, and we're pretty embarrassed when we go home with, what, 12? 12 is good. That's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> really? 12's good. Yeah. 80's better. 12's good. <laughs> 80's better. Yeah. I was on this youth activity thing and we rode a bus out to Nauvoo, to Carthage where the prophet was killed. Have you ever been there? 
Well, they walk you through the jail and show you the rooms, and then they take you to the room where the mob broke in and killed the prophet. And they play this tape, this audio tape. Man, my heart just broke open. And all my pride went away. And trying to look good in front of my friends, and I just started to cry. And not because I was sad, because I was full of light. I was full of heat. And it wasn't me. It was like the spirit of the Lord just came in and sat in my body. And I knew right then that all of it was true. All of it. It's like I wanted to share that with them, you know. But I couldn't. Because it's sacred. Sometimes I think God does it on purpose. It's like he gives you a hundred reasons to believe and then he just drops one or two for you not to believe. So that you can choose to see if you really want to believe. are past. You have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlastingly too late and your destruction is made sure. You have sought all your life for that which you could not obtain. You have sought for happiness in doing iniquity. So repent, O Hollywood. Repent, I say, for the day of the Lord is coming. For not your houses, nor your mansions, nor your movie deals will save you from the wrath of God. Hey. Oh, hey. What would you think if the uh, apostles and the prophets weren't telling the truth? And what if they believed all their lives, worked their way up to the top, and now they know it's all a big lie? I mean, not just Mormonism, but Christianity, the whole thing. But they won't tell us. Damn them if it's not true. Damn them to hell. Hey there. Hi. Hi. Um, the man that was here, Marcus Dalton. Sorry, he's gone. Is he dead? We came to bring him breakfast. He had snuck off on us. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks. When you, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, 
Amen. Who showed up? They're looking for you at the hospital. I don't think they're gonna find me. Where's Benny? He didn't show? Can I sit down? I guess. Just don't be rude to me, okay? I wasn't rude. Oh, I was rude. I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? Sure. I wrote down the names of those books that you told me about. I'm going to read them when I get home. <laughs> yeah, look at Pops. Thinks he's still young. Do you know why I came on a mission? Because you couldn't get married? I'm sorry. I can be a real jerk sometimes. I almost did get married. I, uh... I backed out two weeks before the wedding. He was a return missionary. We'd grown up together. I loved him so much. I wrote him every week. I sent him cookies and neckties and everything. But when he came home, it was just so different. Better, you know. He was just so strong in his faith when he bore his testimony. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't bear my testimony. I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything. I just... I don't know. I just couldn't say it was all true. That Joseph Smith was a prophet. The Book of Mormon is the Word of God. I believed it, but I... I wanted to know. I wanted to be strong like he was. He wrote every couple of weeks for the first few months. But, um, he doesn't write anymore. I'm sorry. Now I know. I really do. Armor took the van. Yeah, that figures. No sign of Benny? I think maybe he changed his mind. Let's go get him. Should we take the bus? I don't want to take the bus. You're not tired? I'm exhausted, but if I sit down, I'll fall asleep, and if I fall asleep, I'll probably lapse into a coma. If I lapse into a coma, I'll probably die, so I don't want to take the bus. Pops, what time is it? It's late. What about those girls? What girls? You know the girls. You
Hi, we're the sister missionaries. Elder Dalton said you might like to speak with us. Man, this is really strange. They're always here this time of day. Hmm. Check this out. There's like three days worth of mail in here. been a member all your life? No. Well, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Um, my mom married this Mormon guy when I was seven. So, you know, I got baptized when I was eight. We were Pentecostal before that. Pentecostal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Are you close to him? Your stepdad? No. 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 <laughs> He's in prison now. Turns out he molested some kids. He traveled around a lot and, um, he did it in a bunch of different states. So they're taking turns keeping him. I'm sorry. He, uh, he never touched me or anything. I'm grateful for that, you know. Count your blessings, I guess. He brought us the church. He baptized me, ordained me. Sometimes I, I can't separate what he gave me. I mean, where does the good stuff stop and the bad stuff start? When I think of what he did, When my mom married him, he, I had to take his last name. She wanted me to. So, sometimes I just wish I could change it back, you know? I guess uh, <laughs> I just haven't had much luck in the dad department. Well, people let you down. At least your real father's there for you. I haven't seen him in 13 years. I was talking about your real father. Wake up. Wake up. What? Kinniger's gone.
Don't tell me it's past curfew. What, are you guys gonna go with me? Actually, I was hoping you'd come back with us. <laughs> Read those books I left you. There's a lot of things in there you should know. I've read everything you've read and then some. Why do you think it took me four years to join the church? Because I had to know every stupid accusation. You're going to go home, you're going to do your research, and then you're going to wish you could come back. But guess what? Now, I know what you're thinking. Look at you. You were so afraid that you were just going to disappear. And maybe I'd believe a little more, too, if I had cancer. You know it's true. I've heard you say it. Was lying. This bus goes right through Kansas City. Why are you still here? I keep, I keep training you guys. Kids like you. Guys that I came out with, they're, uh, they're zone leaders, assistants to the president, and he just keeps sending me you guys. Nobody made you come out here. You could have stayed home, nobody would have cared. What made... What were you thinking? You'd, you'd put on a name tag and a, and a necktie and suddenly you'd be a different person? Your faith would be stronger? Didn't you pray before you came out here? Didn't you study? Because I can't solve your problems. I can teach you the rules. I can teach you the discussions. But what you really need to know, what's going to get you out of bed in the morning get you out on the street and talking to strangers. I can't teach you that. And I can't convert you, Elder.
Father in heaven, I've been in this place for days. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I ask, I ask you now to tell me if this is true. Father in heaven, Father, Get up. Let's do some good. Elders. Brother Morales. Hi. Hi. Laura's not here yet. Um, she didn't tell me you were coming. Today we're, uh, we're here to see you. Brother Morales, I know you may not believe this, but... We're here on our father's business. And you might be the first person that's hearing me say this. You are. The messages we've taught you are true. I know they're true. And I can feel the Lord's Spirit is with us right now. Right here. Can't you feel it? Well, I know that Laura has felt it. I know that she's found what I found. And I know that the Lord wants you to let her join his church. Elders, I, I, I really have to get back to what I was doing. I'll tell Laura you came. She'll be sad that she missed you. Would you mind if we left with a prayer? Could we kneel? Of course. Who would you like to say the prayer? Our Father in heaven. Would you mind saying the prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Elders. Hi. We just saw your dad. Thank you. 
others. Thank you. Thank you. And we ask thee to help us find Benny as soon as possible. And we ask thee to look after him and watch over him carefully wherever he may be. And we... Yeah, he would have been admitted probably yesterday or the day before. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm looking, uh, looking for a friend of mine. I'm worried he might have been in an accident or something. His, yeah, his name is Benny Yao. Y-A-O, Yao. Benjamin. Uh-huh. Uh, th yeah, thank you very much. I sent him home an hour ago. that I didn't have any monies. So they beat me even more. I can't even walk. I can't sit up. It hurts so bad. I think I'm infected. I'm gonna die. Benny, you're not gonna die. I wouldn't have released you from the clinic if you were gonna die. They sent me home because I, I don't have any money. They send me home because I don't have any insurance. I don't want to die. It'll get better. This is just like when my mother died. I knew that something was wrong, and the doctor said she would be fine, but she's not fine. My brother, he's laying in the bed, and the doctor says that he'll be okay, and he's not. I thought they were going to kill me. They beat me with their guns. They beat me and kicked me. They stood on my throat. Look, they broke my crutches. <laughs> Why would they break my crutches? Elder Dalton, they say you're a doctor. No, oh, I, uh, I never finished medical school. But is there anything you can do? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe that he died for your sins and that he has all power even to raise you from the dead if it is his will? I do.
Benjamin Yo, by the authority of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, I anoint you with this oil. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Benjamin Yao, by the authority of the Melchizedek Priesthood, I seal this anointing, and following the prompting of the Spirit, I leave a blessing with you. Our Savior has told us that if we knock, you will answer. If we ask, we shall receive. Benny, our Father in Heaven, has heard your many prayers these many nights as you have asked for the ability to walk. This day, Benny, you will receive this great blessing through your faith. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the priesthood, you may rise from this bed and walk, and from this day forward you will walk and not be weary, and you will run and not faint. This is the blessing you desire, and this is the blessing that our Father in Heaven desires for you. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They just called me at work and I just, I, I don't know, I don't know, I just, they couldn't, I, they didn't let me out and then I couldn't see him and then I thought that maybe he died. I don't want him to die. He's not going to die. He's not going to die. Mimi. Pops, hmm. you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding? We got three baptisms on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> hey, Elder. We did some good today. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Hey. Have you seen the green 
fucking bowl? No. It's, look, look at my bowl. Look at my yellow bowl. Who was supposed to do the dishes today? I did them yesterday. It's 6.30, let's go. What'd you say? Companion prayers, let's go. Pops. Elder Dalton. Gene Dalton, Mark's dad. Excuse me. Hi, Bill. If a few of you will come forward and grasp the casket by the handles firmly, Actually, then we'll we'll, proceed we'll to handle the... this. Can you just give us a few minutes alone? We'll take care of it. Thank sure. you. <clears throat> Elders, come on up here and help. President, maybe you could uh, say a few words since we're not really going to get a chance to say goodbye. I can't help but think of the scripture. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Three years ago, Elder Dalton found out that he wouldn't grow old, that he probably wouldn't get married, and that he wouldn't have children. Most men would have cursed God and given up. He came here. He chose to be with us. There isn't a day goes by that I don't run into somebody whose life Elder Dalton touched. Somebody that he taught. Somebody that he trained or reached in and pulled out of the world and into the light of the gospel. Now, he wasn't perfect. We all know that. He had faults and weaknesses, and he made mistakes. He lacked patience, he lost his temper, he even flirted with my wife. <laughs> but he was just like we are. Imperfect, even clumsy spiritually sometimes. But other times, perfect. If only for a moment, in his heart. And he had his eyes single to the glory of God. Now I want you elders to know that even though you may not give your lives as dramatically as Elder Dalton, 
that you are heroes and martyrs. You are giving your lives, your hours and your days and your months and years in service of God. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Elder Dalton has lost his mortal life, but we know that he's found his eternal life. Amen. 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 President Beecroft didn't let us grieve too long. He told us to get right back to work. Transfers came two days later. Only one person from our district was moved. We knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. Sister. Costa Mesa, huh? Yep. We're good. Thanks. Sister, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> good luck with everything. Thank you. I'll call you when I come across some good books. <laughs> All right. Try not to drive too many people out of the church. Yeah. Maybe somebody in Costa Mesa can do something with that hair. Kinniger's replacement finally showed up. Another spud named Elder Rex. He arrived with my new companion, Elder Downey, from Salt Lake City. How you doing? Hey. So where are you from? Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Wow. Big tornadoes, right? Yeah. Cool. Help my sister, please. Uh, she she's been looking for a job for so long and I just hope that she finds a job that that she likes and, and that she's she, she feels good about for all have not every gift given unto them for there are many gifts and every man is given a gift by the spirit of God Bless us with thy spirit as we go out on the streets today, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. All right, let's do some good. Hi. Everything worked out as Pops had hoped. On Saturday, I performed my first baptism. Actually, my first three baptisms. Thanks, man.
Later that night, we taught 15 of Benny's friends and family. Within the next three months, eight of them were baptized, including his sister. Dalton was right. The field is white, ready to harvest, even in Los Angeles. The last I heard, Lara was going to Rick's college, and she was engaged. Her father never did join the church. He died of a heart attack three years later. One year to the day after Benny's baptism, he left for his mission to Taiwan. He served a successful mission, and he's now the mission leader in the Santa Monica Third Ward. Brother Rose never went back to drinking coffee, but he is still giving free rights to the missionaries. I recently heard that Carla did get baptized. It took two years and a major career change, but now she's the spiritual living teacher in her relief society. Sister Monson went home, and somehow, within a year, she became a secretary for one of the general authorities. She married a construction worker and gave birth to twins. Mangum found out that his father had sold his car to help pay for his mission, so he stole his father's motorcycle and went off on a cross-country tour. He didn't come back. Finally, President Beecroft bumped into him in Casper, Wyoming. He was living in a trailer behind a truck stop. He was a cook. His girlfriend was a waitress who was expecting their first child. They gave the president a free bowl of chili. The president gave them a free wedding. Sandoval the Lamanite used the Navy to help him finish college. The Navy is now using him to train torpedo men somewhere in Virginia. He's married, no kids yet. He says he's going to retire at 42 and live the rest of his life on a houseboat. His wife says otherwise. Banks returned to Los Angeles after his mission. He studied comparative religion at Loyola University and married Elder Sandoval's little sister in the L.A. Temple. He now teaches seminary to high school students in St. George, Utah. I don't know what happened to Kenniger. I never heard if he came back to the church or not. My parents so far have not. Elder Downey and I became good friends. We still talk every month or two. We talk about all the people we taught, all our companions, all of our funniest, and all of our most sacred experiences. As for me, when I went home, I transferred all my credits to Brigham Young University. My first day of class, my freshman English teacher became ill and was permanently replaced by a graduate student named Janine Frank. We were married two months later. Somehow I still got a C in English. <laughs> we're thinking 40 years from now, maybe we'll go on another mission. Together. Oh yeah, two months shy of our first anniversary. We had a baby boy. A beautiful baby boy. We named him Dalton. Dalton Allen. Mostly, we just call him Pops. We're looking for me. We're longing for light. We're aimlessly dreaming. Somewhere out in the night. We look at each other. Pushing out our opinions Our gift wrapped in
never know 